Hello, happy Tuesday. Welcome back to another episode of The Practice. This show is an unrehearsed screen recording of my workflow, mostly in Cinema 4D, but other digital art applications as well. My name's Stuart. I'm a designer, illustrator, animator, and your pal. And I'm psyched that you're back to join us this week. In keeping with the holiday theme, we're going we're gonna to crank on a little haunted house today. We did a, a jack-o'-lantern, some other spooky stuff in previous weeks. We're going to continue that today with a little bit of a haunted house here. So as you can see, I'm just using primitives and some basic geometry to rough out the shapes here. I want to have sort of a downward looming angle up on this thing. And you can see I'm playing with the, uh, the angle width here on the camera to get us a little bit more of a dramatic look. We're putting the, putting the house up on a simple heel, hill here. And I'm just sort of going through and adding some details. And have a little front porch, a little entrance area, some steps up to the hill. You'll see that some of the roof and parts towards the back of the house are a little wonky and unresolved, but we're, we're not dealing with the full model here. We're just going to have that, that front shot really be the beauty shot. So uh, we're going to focus most of our attention just on the image, on the, on the pieces that will be visible in the image from the given camera angle. So. And, you know, to, to further that sort of exaggerated, elongated look, we're going to actually put a taper deformer into this whole house group. And you can see that sort of gives you that, that exaggerated kind of haunted house tapered sort of feel, which I think adds a lot to the personality of the model. We're going through and adding a few additional details. Going to do an extrude inner and get a window going there. I think what we're making here is, is some tiles for the roof. Got most of the, the house shape blocked out here, so we're gonna, gonna start adding in some details. At first I tried just using a cloner object on the roof, but eh, it wasn't, wasn't working just the way I wanted, so I used a more typical cloner and I'm just starting to line these shingles up. I'm gonna take that linear cloner and I throw it uh, in a honeycomb array cloner and set that up so we have a nice running pattern here and the, the tiles are offset by half their width, which is how tiles are in real life. So we're sort of positioning that, getting that where it needs to be, adjusting the angle so they overlap nicely, and then into some rather basic texturing. using capsules as I do so frequently to get some interest in the sort of foreground and the environment around the house. And since this is an outdoor scene, what works better than the physical sky? So throw one of those in and turn the time really towards the evening. Um, it's great we can get some stars and sort of a dusky sunset effect if we set this up properly. And you'll see throughout the course of the video we're really adjusting and tweaking and fine-tuning those parameters, improving as we go. And here I think I go ahead and expand that cloner using the C key so that I can remove the tiles from places they don't need to be. Here, exaggerating the height of some of these items. And do a little uh, doorway here. So again, we do an extrude inner. Just rescale that geometry so it fits nicely. You're seeing what I'm doing here. I think I do it for the door, and I'm I'm positive I do it for, a, uh, you know, the the details around the windows. Is what I'm really doing is I'm just grabbing um, a bit of the geometry that's close to the area where I want to add that detail, and I'm just copying and pasting and removing everything except for one plane that's really close to where I need it in the end. You can see I'll start doing that here. So I've deleted everything except for this one plane, and I just extrude that up. And since it's such simple geometry, instead of adding another primitive, I just go ahead and, you know, use the geometry that's there. Because I think I would have spent more time repositioning primitives than I would have just, you know, creating a new extrusion. So there you have it. Some, some details, some shutters, 
and some uh, mullions, I think you call them. And everything's looking a little bit sort of clean and plumb and at 90 degrees. So as we go through the video here, you see I start rotating things. You see that one shutter's a little bit off, and, and nothing gives a haunted house more of a haunted house feel than, you know, some boards missing, disrepair, shutter hanging off kind of crooked. So we go through and do a bunch of that stuff as well. You notice as I'm going through here, some of the geometry, when I go in and edit it in plane or, or uh, vertex mode, um, it looks off. And that's just because when you have, when you have geometry selected um, and you're not in object mode, the deformers won't be active. So that taper deformer is temporarily disabled on the geometry that I'm selecting and working with. So you see, as I deselect it, it sort of snaps back into the position that I want it in. But I'm doing a little bit of guesswork here as I'm repositioning and extruding geometry without the, uh, without the deformer being applied. So you'll see that sort of go back and forth. And what else as we're looking at these renderings now, what else says uh, Creepy Haunted House more than a single glowing window up in the highest floor? So we're going to throw one of those in. And I felt that the environment needed a little bit more detail, so at this point I'm going to start you know, roughing out a tree. Um, and what I like to do a lot of the times is draw all of my splines. If I know that I'm going to wind up doing a ton of sweet nerves, I'll just draw all my splines in one shot since I have the tool open. And then you can see here I'm just copying and pasting the sweep with a circle spline already inside of it. So it makes just putting this tree together a lot faster. Playing with some of those uh, some of those sizes in the details tab, and that allows me to get a nice taper on some of these tree limbs. And I'm just repositioning and copying and pasting and really filling the tree out a bit. There we go. Looking creepy, right? So you can see, you know, the, tr the tree looks good in the, in the empty file I had it in, but after I brought it into this new scene, I felt like some of the limbs weren't really helping the composition. So I'll, as you can see, I'm sort of tweaking the position of some of those, making sure they, they work uh, visually. Tweak, 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 tweak. Adjusting the visibility of that light up there. We go ahead and add some volumetric lighting to that as well. Make it kind of yellowish and creepy. Here we go. Now we're just extruding the edge of that uh, of that existing window pane up and using that to create the little mullions. Very, very simple plane inside of a cloner with some random applied to it just to get a little bit of grass. Because, you know, there's, the ghosts in a haunted house don't neatly maintain the lawn, right? So we want some overgrown shrubby stuff here. And we can also create a sense of depth by adding some stuff to the foreground here. And make a little window in this tower. I just used a capsule there, made sure I had enough subdivisions in the tower to get a nice clean bool. Or bully? How do you guys pronounce that? Bool or bully? And you'll see in a lot of these test renderings, I'm trying to find the right balance between having enough lighting in the sky object and also uh, 
having it feel dark enough, right? So we wanted this to look dark and feel kind of creepy, but we also want to have enough light so we can actually see the item. And ultimately, I wind up going in and adding another uh, spotlight uh, here, which I, I sort of turn down and, and have kind of subtle and, and make kind of a purple color, which gives us a bit of edge lighting on the house and helps create a little more mood and also makes some of the geometry that we've worked so hard to model visible, which is important. Got to strike that right balance to get the mood. What I've also done is used a gradient and a really thin strip of black to uh, to a new material which it, which has a diffuse channel applied, and that's you know a way to make some subtle detail in the the surface of the house here, almost like some some uh, shingles or not shingles. What are they called? Siding. See there, we've bumped up the lighting a bit, and that that looks good. But I think that's a little bit too bright. Want more of a nighttime feel. So then we make it a little later and a little darker. And we pump up that, uh, that purple light. And we're getting closer. Now inside the sky object, there's a, there's a lot of little settings you can tweak to uh, fine tune some of this stuff. You know, I was messing with the, the saturation uh, adjustment. I was messing with, it's called the, um, Oh, the name's escaping me, the, the nighttime balance, stuff like that. There's just a, a gang of different uh, knobs you can twist there to get the desired result. And to be honest, I'm not sure what exactly each of those knobs does specifically, um, but you just sort of, uh, at least I do, I sort of uh, tweak and push and pull and do a couple tests and, until I get something that's looking right. And so the final bit of modeling detail here, or, or close to it, is um, this picket fence around the edge. I, I still felt that the bottom edge of the composition was a little bit plain and needed a bit of detail. And um, it also gives you a sort of a, a sense of scale. Uh, so I, I, I liked what that picket fence added. Here what I'm doing is just adding some really simple uh, cube primitives and just tweaking their placement and, and really making a broken siding kind of look on, on the side of this house. So it's still looking a little bit too clean. I want it to kind of beat it up and make it look weathered and dilapidated. And adding these, these little uh, these cubes around helps to do that. I think I, I go a little further than what we have here and, and continue to add those because I was pleased with the effect. So just, you know, tweaking some final details here, but at this point I'm fairly satisfied with the composition and the overall model. The, the lighting is getting much closer. So we're narrowing in on it. Throwing some quick texture on the lawn here. I realized it was totally untextured, so I think what I do here is just sort of a olivey green, as if it's uh, burnt out grass, and just a bit of a bit of noise in the diffuse channel, just just so it's not totally flat, just so we've got a bit of a bit of dimpling and and roughness there, like a lawn would be. And we're adding a few new colors to the house here because it's feeling a bit one note, a bit monotone. You can see even just with those color additions, we're, we're starting to get a lot closer. Here we go, that last sort of bit of detail here in the, in the siding. See, I, I uh, changed the angle on that roof a little bit. I'm just going through and kind of tweaking a few things here and there. 
And then here at the end, I sort of had, I had an idea for a last little bit of detail that might make this thing extra creepy. So what I'm doing here is I'm using a loft nerb and some circle splines to create a sort of silhouette shape. I decided that this house would be even creepier if there was some sort of figure standing in the window above. So we're going to try that out. You can see how that bit of detail adds to the house and makes it feel a bit more weathered and worn and old. Angling some of that stuff so it looks broken and in disrepair. Doing the same on the tower. Wasn't wasn't hundred percent sold on the position of that guy, so I tried him tried him in a different window. Felt a little too small in the first rendering, but getting there. Now I'm much more satisfied with with the overall feel of this house. Now it has, now that it has those sort of additional details on the siding and in the shutters. So position in this guy and realize that, you know, these, these window details should probably be a little more beat up as well. So went ahead and did that. I decided as a last bit of detail, this, this is mostly going to be a static image, but what if we have the first frame of this image be just the house, and then this figure sort of creeps into position and reveals himself over, uh, over just a, a couple of frames. And so I did some really simple positional keyframing just to get this guy uh, in position. And now here, uh, here we go, we're knocking out renderings. I've fast forwarded this even more so you don't have to wait through uh, all the renderings. I always see this and, and wish my, uh, my machine rendered this fast in actuality, but not the case, unfortunately. So what I realized, unfortunately, is that in that first pass of renderings, I wasn't careful enough, didn't do enough test renderings, and the figure actually walked through the light. So there's a couple of frames there where the light sort of cut out because it was inside the figure. So do test renderings before you knock out final animations. It'll, it'll save you time in the long run. So here we go, super simple, just a handful of frames that I'm going to go ahead and compile in Photoshop. And as per usual, we're going to use curves and levels and some brightness and contrast and just kind of tweak and fine-tune this thing until it's just the way we want it. If you like this video, please hit like and subscribe. If you have any further questions, don't hesitate to drop one in the comments below. If you want to keep up with me and the work that I'm doing, please check me out on Instagram at DLGNCE. And until next week, this is Stuart saying goodbye. Thanks.